Hey there, you know me, my mustache Mike. Welcome to my corner of the workshop. You know, the recent baseball display rack that I made for Chip to store all his baseballs and hats started an absolute firestorm of requests from the gang here in our workshop. Who else but Stumpy whined the loudest? But you know, I have another boss with more seniority than him that's in the running for the next project. Yeah, that's Mrs. Mustache. So I got thinking, hey, why not make her a box that would hold all that expensive jewelry that I've got her over oh, about the last half century? Yeah, a couple square inches should do the trick. So why not build a box and use the scroll saw? What kind of wood would I use? You know, it got me thinking, too, on one of uh, his recent After Hours wood reconnaissance missions, Stumpy acquired a, a little cache of Purple Heart wood. Now, I don't know if you used Purple Heart in the past. It comes from South America, and it's only surpassed by diamonds and Stumpy's forehead, of course, when it comes to hardness. So could it be cut on a scroll saw? Follow along and we'll find out. Okay, so we're off and going here. So it's going to take a few minutes to cut this very hard wood. So let me tell you a little bit about the prep while you're watching me cut. First of all, I chose to uh, stack cut the two three-quarter pieces. Now to address the lubricity issue after I spray glued the pattern onto the top piece, I taped both sides of each piece. So I've actually taped four surfaces here. So we try to get as much lubricity as we can. I'm also, as you notice, cutting on the outside of the line. We're going to have to uh, do some work here with a little sanding on the edge. So watch your forward speed. Don't push it too hard. And as you're going to see here on the edge, um, it came out pretty good. Now with this purple heart, the dark that you see is not burn. It's actually the color of the wood. So the tape worked really well to help with uh, that burn issue. So now the two thin pieces that I'm going to use for the back and for the cover, um, I also taped as well um, completely with the packaging tape because they could have a propensity to burn even though it's thin, this real hard wood. On both the thin piece and on the three-quarter stock, the blade of choice was a number seven skip tooth blade. You might have the feeling that perhaps using a, a finer tooth blade with more uh, teeth per inch would be better on hardwood, but not on this real hard stuff. Actually, with the less teeth per inch, you get more room for the cut material to uh, pass the blade and come out on either the top or the bottom. So a little more forward speed on the thin stuff, but um, it, uh, to my surprise, cut very well with this blade. Now the main box piece, of course, is going to be made out of the two three-quarter inch pieces. So I glued my inside pattern on and then went over to my little scroll saw drill press to drill uh, the pierce holes. You notice how hard this wood is? You even see a little smoke come off it with the drill. I drilled two holes in case something would kind of happen on the inside. Um, I could uh, start on another hole and also give the, bra the blade some relief when I get to the first hole. On these inside cuts for the box pieces, I actually changed over at this point to a number three spiral. I wanted to see if the spiral blade would uh, affect the, how the wood cut. Um, it actually worked really good. Of course, we're only cutting one thickness here, and I wanted to also stay right on the line because it's going to be hard to sand off a lot of material on the inside of this box. With a spiral blade, you want to watch your forward speed because they would have a tendency to break much easier. In the picture, you can actually see a little curvature in the blade. Um, you have to kind of push it hard in a way to get it to cut in this very hard material. I was very surprised with how this spiral blade worked. You also notice you get a little vibration. With the spiral blade, you don't get as much relief in the kerf, and you have a tendency to want to vibrate. So you really got to hold down well with your fingers. And when you're on camera, though, you got to keep your fingers back. So I couldn't put the pressure that I really wanted, and that's why you see some vibration. Place the first cut piece 
on top of the mix box section and then trace on the inside so you get a consistency between the two center pieces. Now that all the pieces are cut out, of course it's time to remove the pattern and all that packaging tape that we placed on the pattern pieces. The old heat gun comes in handy and remember the standard warning, watch those fingers. A little sanding at this point also comes in handy. It'll remove uh, small amounts of adhesive that are still left. If you have a lot of adhesive, uh, mineral spirits um, will remove this. And it also kind of knocks off some of those burrs uh, temporarily that are on the pieces. So as we get ready here to start uh, gluing up our uh, box. Okay, obviously the back piece goes down first, but then uh, we have to be kind of careful with this amount of glue we put on. This wood is so dense that there's very little porosity in the wood um, for the glue to soak up. So just put a thin bead and use a glue brush. Brush it around good and expect some uh, squeeze out. Also make sure, of course, the, uh, your grains go in the right way when you lay the piece down. Align the pieces the best you can, but uh, do not clamp this up. We're going to let it set for about five minutes stacked together so the glue partially sets. If you try to clamp it up right now, they'll squeeze and move all over the place. Then after it sets for about five minutes, I'm going to show you how um, I clamped it up. So here's how I did the glue up. I sandwiched the pieces now kind of set and I checked it for alignment in between two pieces of pine and put it in my bench vise at this point. You shouldn't get any slide now, and if there's any misalignment uh, when we go through the sanding process, um, it will clean that up. Don't over-squeeze it, but uh, make it uh, good and tight. After about an hour, it's time for a little initial sanding here. Uh, you can burn it with the sandpaper too, so kind of watch it and watch your knuckles. And do a little rough sanding, knock off the glue, and kind of see where you are as far as your margins. I wanted to do a little inlay on the top with a new product we've been had here in the shop called Inlace. So I made me a little heart pattern and put it on the drill with a couple pierce holes to get ready to cut it out. To cut the little inlay heart out, I stayed with a spiral blade to see how it would work. Now being we're going to use this new product Inlace and it's an epoxy material that's going to harden, you want to stay right dead on the line because you know, or at least sand up nice the way you want it because it's really going to show when that inlay is in there if you uh, don't make a proper cut. My cutout wasn't exactly the way I wanted it and I needed to be smooth so I used my little Dremel tool with a number 160 carbide burr and uh, cleaned her up a little bit so that it looks real nice when we pour that uh, epoxy inlay on the inside. On the inside now, I used my Guinevere and a carbide rotary rasp um, to start cleaning it up. Notice the, the amount of dust that comes off this and how fine the cuttings are. This purple heart is extremely hard. It's almost like cutting a walnut. I uh, also changed over now to a drum sander on the end of my Guinevere and uh, they do a really nice job for uh, touching up on the inside. We're going to do a separate video review on this Inlace product. What a neat product. Pour it in, or mix it up, pour it in, and 12 hours later you can put a sander right to it um, to sand it down. Just comes out hard just like stone. Made a beautiful little inlay. I switched over to a 240 grit sandpaper. They say you can go as high as uh, 1,500 grit. You can really get a, a polished you know, stone look out of this particular material too. For a finish of this box, I used a little Watco Danish oil, natural. Put one coat on, let it go 15 minutes. Put another coat, 15 minutes. Polish it all off. Did real nice. The box part is now finished. You notice the cover is a little bigger than the base. I did this intentionally so it was easy to get a hold of the edges um, to take it off. So now we're going to work on the inside just a little bit. I added a little self-adhesive uh, black felt to the inside of the cover and to the inside of the box. So whatever you put inside, rings or whatever, um, if the box gets shaken, uh, they don't get scratched. 
this wood is so hard I was afraid of it sliding around on top of a dresser. So I put three little felt pads on the back and here's a little profile from the side. Nice match in the grain. Voila! A very nice little box for Mrs. Mustache. So there my scroll saw and friends is a cute little box made with a scroll saw using some beautiful but extremely hard wood. So what can we take back to the shop from this project? First of all, scroll saws can cut hardwoods without wood burn if you use the right combination of blade, forward speed and pressure, and some blade lubrication, which we got from that packaging tape. And that's a great tip. Now, Purple Heart and other similar exotic woods might not always be your choice, but why not experiment with some? Beautiful wood, nice grain, and stains bring out some beautiful color. So that's going to wrap it up for today. Hey, come on back soon. Pull up a stump because you can trust the advice that old Mustache Mike gives because I would never pull your stash.